Hey everybody, Mr. Hames here, hoping to provide you with a quick recap of the Effervescent uh, Tablets Lab, or Alka-Seltzer Tablets. Um, in your lab, you have a simple question. How does increasing the number of tablets added to water affect the water's temperature? So how does increasing the amount of these added to water uh, change or affect the water's temperature? Now I'm about to do the demonstration here in just a minute, but before uh, I do that, if you haven't already, make sure that you look at your lab. So if you gotta hit the pause button really quick, I need you to open up your lab and look at what you need to do. There are several sections that you gotta fill out before you do the demonstration. That includes the background information section that talks about endo and exothermic reactions, the independent, dependent, and controlled variable section, and which we've gone over a lot in class, making a hypothesis, your observations, and course the procedure of what you're going to do today. So you have to fill out several boxes before you get to the data collection chart, which is at the end of the part one of the document. So um, once you've done those things, I'm going to go ahead and show you the lab. So again, if you haven't done that, go do it right now. I'm going to get the lab ready. Okay, so what you see here is the setup for our lab. Our procedure has us setting up five different beakers, okay? I've labeled the beakers by the number of tablets that we plan to put into each beaker. For example, zero is zero tablets. That's because our control. We need a control because we want to know um, that it's for sure the amount of tablets affecting the temperature of water. And we'll know that if we don't add any tablets to this one and the temperature of the water doesn't change, then we know it's for sure the tablets affecting the temperature of these waters, assuming these do change. If this temperature changes, then we know something's wrong. Something else other than the tablets is affecting the temperature of the water. So we're isolating this and controlling this to make sure that we know it's just our independent variable, the number of tablets, affecting the temperature change in the water. Then I have a different thermometer that's in each beaker that you can see here that's measuring the temperature of the water as we uh, add each of the tablets into the beakers, okay? Um, and what I need you to do right now is in your data collection start, start recording the temperature for the water in each beaker. So beaker zero, the temperature is 19.6 degrees Celsius. Uh, beaker one, the temperature is 19.4 degrees Celsius. Uh, beaker two, the temperature is 19.3 degrees Celsius. Beaker three is 18.6 degrees Celsius. And finally, beaker four is 18.7 degrees Celsius, okay? So we're recording the initial temperature of each one of these in our five beakers. So if you need more time to do that, pause the video and record your initial temps. If you're ready to go, I'm gonna start adding the baking soda. I'm gonna watch what happens not only to the water, which is exactly 50 milliliters of water added to each one of these beakers, okay? But uh, we're gonna see what happens to the water's temp as we add those tablets. Now, as you can see, I prepared a Petri dish with the appropriate number of tablets in each Petri dish, and I'm just gonna go ahead and add them to the beakers. Here we go, here's one, here's two, here's three, and here's our four. Get you in there closer so you can have a look. Now, as we're doing this, we're not only writing down quantitative observations, but we're kind of taking mental note of qualitative observations as well. You hear a bubbling noise or a fizzing sound, kind of crackling as this chemical reaction takes place. We see a little bit of color change, not much. It's just kind of getting gray and foggy in there or white. 
Although at this point, it's unsure that the water's actually changing colors or if there's just so many bubbles in there, it's kind of appearing to be foamy and white. There's a control, okay? Nothing to see here, folks. Just water sitting there. Temperature hasn't changed much. Don't record your temperatures just yet because the reactions are still ongoing and have yet to be completed. Now we'll know that the reaction is concluded when the fizzing stops. And I'm not sure if you can hear from the video, but I'm kind of listening here in the room. And beakers one, two, and, well, one and two are just about done, but three, you can still see there's a little bit of a tablet in there. Let's get a good view. Okay. Beaker four looks just about done, but there are some small pieces of the tablet still waiting to dissolve, so. When I zoomed up, you could see there's quite a bit of condensation on the, the edges of the beakers. But here we go. I think we can start taking some final temps because the reaction is starting to wrap up for at least these first beakers. Now in our control, if you see there, the temperature is 19.6 degrees Celsius. Final temp for beaker zero. Beaker one. Okay, 17.7 .7 degrees Celsius. That is beaker one, as you can see there. Final temp for beaker two is 16.0 degrees Celsius. Final temp for beaker three is 13.8 degrees Celsius. I know 13.9 now, it's starting to come back up. 13.8 was the reading just a minute ago. And 13.6 degrees Celsius is the temperature for beaker four. So make sure that you get those recorded in your data chart. Okay, so there you have it, the full procedure for our lab, but we're not done yet. Now we move into the analyzing data portions, okay? So in your chart, you're gonna have to start crunching some numbers. Uh, do some simple math. Find the difference between your initial and final temp. That's column number four on your chart. And uh, once you've done that, you're going to move on to however your teacher has asked you to do the graphing portion. Okay, so you're going to do a line graph uh, for the data that you just collected. For me, I'm putting a separate video out on how to do that. If you have any questions, reach out to your science teacher so you too know how to do that. Um, but just quick recap here, our question was to determine that if increasing the number of these Alka-Seltzer tablets to water increased or decreased uh, the temperature of the water. And hopefully your initial conclusion is uh, pretty clear at this point. Okay, the water temp does change. Maybe it changed like you expected it, or maybe it didn't. So it's time to basically acknowledge whether you've proven or disproven whatever hypothesis it is that you've made. I'm holding my tongue saying exactly what happened. Hopefully it's really clear to you, but I want you to draw your own conclusion from the data that you just collected yourself. So there you have it. A uh, quick kind of rundown of the scientific method, a uh, quick rundown of the effervescent tablets lab. And if you have any questions, please reach out. Hope you enjoyed this and we're ready to get going with chemistry. You guys have a great day. See ya.